Kevin Phillips passed away on, on October 9th, 2023. I'll always be indebted to him because he was one of the earliest people I interviewed for our documentary, American Feud, A History of Conservatives and Liberals. Here's a selection of highlights of his interview. It's about 10 minutes long, and you can see them in context if you watch the documentary American Feud. It's available at our website, nerdsmakemedia.com, and it's also available on Amazon. In practical terms, I would not think of myself as a conservative. Uh, I started to have some troubles with that during the Reagan years, although I, I voted for him. But during the Bush era, both 41 and 43, if they're conservatives, I'm basically not. Some people might take a look at, at your books in the last 10 years or more and say, Kevin Phillips, he's a liberal. Have you ever heard that? And what do you think of that? Well, I've heard it, but it, I don't put a lot of credence in it because very few of the liberals think I'm a liberal. The people who think I'm a liberal are these sort of... Uh, unrealists who call themselves neoconservatives. Um, they are, in my opinion, better described as neo-unrealists. They are a new brand of people without a realistic grasp of what they talk about. And they come out of a democratic tradition, and, and now, unfortunately, they've partially made the Republican Party over in their unconservative uh, thought process. Now, I'm not going to say some of the more intelligent ones like Bill Kristol don't have a number of genuine conservative streaks, but I think a lot of them were pushed by foreign policy issues towards foreign policy viewpoints that are, are not historically conservative. The subtext of what I'm saying is that I think a fair percentage of these people can frankly be described as horses' asses. Anytime you use red for the conservative party and blue for the liberal party, if we accept those definitions, you're just totally out of scheme with the, uh, uh, the colors of history. In other words, communism was red and Toryism was blue. So why do we have it reversed? Obviously, some noodle head at the media got this rolling and it's, it's unfortunate. It's also quite true that you don't have uh, red and blue or black and white. What you would have in a better map, if it was black and white, you would have shades ranging from black down to white and going through gray. And I suppose if you were drawing this map with any integrity and honesty, instead of using blue and red, you'd have a spectrum that ran from red to blue, but with a lot of interesting shades of purple in the middle. Uh, all of this, in my opinion, is a total waste of time. I don't know why those two colors were chosen, and I hope at some point when things get more rational again, they can, they can do a better job. Edmund Burke was a principally a late 18th century British statesman and member of parliament who defined his conservatism based in fair measure on the, the radical and discontinuous politics that he saw in the French Revolution, with the notions of equality and uprooting institutions. And, and he defined conservatism in a way that made it anti-Jacobin, made it opposed to the French Revolution. Now, in some ways, what you have with the Bushes, in a sense, is, is conservative Jacobinism of uprooting things and putting through preposterous distortions of war rationales and preemptive this and spasmodic that. I mean, this is not Burkean. Uh, I, I can't imagine that, that George W. would say to anybody with a straight face that he's Burkean, and if he ever does, somebody should ask him to spell it quickly. And you talk about Pat Robertson and Jerry Falwell and organized gay bashing and people who want to put faith healers in the Food and Drug Administration and wackos in the Justice Department and uh, all kinds of people who wanted to go to war in Iraq because Saddam Hussein was the new Nebuchadnezzar and then Babylon was uh, reincarnated as Baghdad. That's the religious right. And this is getting a little close to nutball country. 
And if the liberals understood how much they'd messed up in the last 20 or 30 years in transgressing the religion of the ordinary American, they could make a much better differentiation between the fact that you've got a lot of nutballs around there in the religious right, and you've got a lot of ordinary Americans who deserve a little more respect voting conservative on religious issues because they were scoffed at for a quarter of a century by secular America. From what I've read, the Southern strategy sort of started when you were involved in, in politics in uh, the, the 60s, the late 60s, early 70s. And, and now the, the South seems solidly Republican for the foreseeable future. Why do you think that is? And how has that held since then? Well, the first thing you're going to have to do there is back up because the first Southern strategy overtly was Barry Goldwater in 1964. And Goldwater's Southern strategy was basically to appeal to the South on the idea of the civil rights issue as being uh, radicalism and anti-Southernism. And it did appeal to the South, but just the Deep South just the, the South that had the, the heavy ratios of black-white division. And Goldwater was absolutely wiped out. The people who call themselves liberals include a lot of people who simply have no grasp of the political dynamics of religion, of war, of the importance of the military to a large part of middle America, of the, the fear of the United States losing its role both in, in the world militarily in terms of safety and, and economically. Uh, I just think liberals do not grasp a lot of things. I think what you do have is partly because people are so sick of the two parties and the polarization and the corrupt politics is a lack of enthusiasm, which means an awful lot of people who would be swing voters don't even bother to vote. You could also say that we're the 50% nation in the sense that only 50% of the voting age public wants to bother with it. Johnson wouldn't make up his mind on whether they'd raise taxes or they'd finance Vietnam through deficit spending. And inflation was generated in a major way. So I looked on these people and I thought they were economically radical and half naive. They were uh, sociologically uh, radical and provocative, in my opinion, and they, they ran a crummy war. They didn't pay attention to the generals or the demonstrators. So it just graded on any conservative thought process I had at the time that none of this is conservative. All of this is reckless and counterproductive. The difficulty I face now in the, the new century is that my idea of reckless and counterproductive is exemplified by a conservatism, which is not <laughs> conservatism. So for me, if you, you take my conservatism of the 60s, it would make me just as disgusted with this crowd in, in uh, this decade as I was with the Johnson people 40 years ago. George W. Bush could be called in many ways a confused conservative. And I say this because it's not just a matter of his intellect or the lack of it. Uh, his family, and this is apparent in the way both he and his father have all these problems in getting their sentences straight, and they have to do things like play golf very quickly. They, they have a limited attention span. I genuinely think he is a confused conservative. He takes aspects of what he wants from policies and ideologies, but I don't think he has a coherent overview of either American history or American political thinking, or for that matter, I don't think he has any depth on most of the issues he has to deal with. Uh, an article in The New Yorker in the spring this year referred to the fact that he and his father, in contrast to Jeb Bush, suffered from what was called dislogia. And this is a confusion of being able to speak and identify uh, concepts. It, it, it's described in a lot of different ways, but it's not something you want in a president. I'm old enough to grasp the situation in terms of people learning lessons as me. A lot of military and a lot of issues I now call them on a new Bill Crystal. I can't say that they're back to the front. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. We're talking about with your father. Democrats.
what, right up there at the top of the list? Yeah. It's hard to say. Um, yeah. It's interesting. I'll always be amazed. Mm -hmm. I think this year, though, too. Well, there's a lot. But it's just a, within the range.